Um, I'm here to talk to you about child trafficking. And child trafficking, although it's gaining uh, attention in the public's consciousness, is definitely not a new issue. It's a big problem here in the Capital District and across the state and really across the country. Child trafficking happens when a person under the age of 18 is compelled to sell their sex or labor for the benefit or profit of someone else. So at its very core, child trafficking happens when a person under 18 is commodified so that he or she can be bought and sold. Victims of trafficking are American and foreign born. They're male, female, and transgender. They range in age from infancy to adulthood. For the purpose of this conversation though, we're gonna stick with uh, youth under the age of 18. And like I said, trafficking is not a new issue. It's existed since the first time one human learned how to turn another into a slave. What hasn't existed before in New York State is a coordinated system response to respond to child trafficking victims through social service systems. I first learned about human trafficking when I was working at a group home uh, in New York City. We had 15 girls living in our care. They ranged in age from 15 to 21, and they were deemed hard to place. Uh, what this means is that they had been abused and neglected so terribly by their families, uh, and they had been through so many foster homes that it was really unlikely they'd be successful with another family, so they were living with us. I came to this work uh, right out of college, a young social worker, ready to take on the world and solve all the problems. I was completely naive. A perfect example of how naive I was is that four of our kids, so four out of 15, were being trafficked for sex in our home, and I had no idea. We had no clue what was going on. We knew that something was wrong. We knew that they were all having issues. There was something going on. We had no idea what it was, and so we didn't know how to help them. This is really, really common. Of the trafficked youth who have been identified in New York State, an estimated 80% have come into contact with the child welfare system before. One of the trafficking survivors who lived in our care, I'll call Tamara. She was 16 at the time. She had a bright smile, a kind heart. She was one of my favorite kids. She, like many other trafficking survivors, had a controlling person in her life. And this person to us, or this person was her boyfriend. And to us, it looked like domestic violence. It looked like an abusive relationship. And so we were working on this dynamic with her. We had no idea that this person was her pimp. So one day, it was actually just around this time before the holidays, she left and she didn't come back. We filed a missing persons report. We thought we knew where she was, but we had no support from law enforcement to help find her. She came back to us a couple weeks later. She was hungry and skinny. She smelled bad. Her hair was not done. Her clothes were stained. It was a really horrible sight. She told one of the staff that she had been at her boyfriend's house and he wouldn't let her leave. In other words, she had been kidnapped. She had also been sexually assaulted multiple times. I took her to a local precinct to make a report. We were met by a large intimidating man and he took her into what I presume is an interrogation room. It was tiny, the walls were drab and gray. There was a dangling light bulb, a metal chair and a table. She, just coming out of this awful traumatic situation, sat in that chair and he stood over her like this. I was not allowed in the room with her. And instead of treating her like a crime victim who came to report something that had happened to her, she was treated like a nuisance and a liar. She was out of that room in less than a minute. I told you I was naive. I didn't know how to advocate for her. So we left. We went back to the group home. She stayed in our care and she kept dating her pimp. In the discourse around human trafficking, a lot of attention is paid to getting services for survivors. And I agree, this is really important. Tamara had these services. Through the child welfare system, she had housing, counseling, educational services, the whole gamut. But because we didn't know what trafficking was, we did not know how to help her. And so we failed her. Services failed her when she was abused and neglected so terribly by her parents that she was removed from the home. The victim of abuse was removed. And she was in our care for years with no hope of having a permanent, viable family. Services failed her when she left and no one looked for her. Services failed her when she was in our care. We tried to report a crime and she was treated like a liar. I failed her when we left that precinct without a fight. Services continued to fail her for years while she stayed in our care while being trafficked. 
If we want to effectively respond to child trafficking victims in our state, we need a coordinated systems response, and so we're building one. IOFA developed ChildRight, a system change model that responds to child trafficking through the child welfare system. It's being implemented in New York State through the Office of Children and Family Services, and it's also been implemented in the state of Illinois. Through this model, we're bringing together stakeholders, service providers, government agencies, law enforcement officials, so that we can respond to this issue with one voice. We're training providers on how to identify the red flags of trafficking, including those we missed in Tamara. We're building resources and tools so that providers can know how to respond when they see a kid on their caseload. We're training people to recognize that these kids are crime victims and not child prostitutes. We've only been doing this work for about a year and a half. We're pretty fresh out of the gate, but it's working. So far, we've trained thousands of professionals on how to identify these kids. They've gone back into the field, and they've recognized almost 100 already. We are bringing together networks of providers who didn't know about each other before. They're having communication, they're, we're supporting their dialogue, and we're finding creative solutions to these really complex problems. We are training people to change their mindset and we're getting kids the services that they need. We're implementing this issue. We're developing policies, procedures, and protocol at multiple levels so that we're filling gaps, strengthening the system, and this change can be implemented and developed over time. We're still fresh out of the gate, like I said. There's a lot of work to be done. But what would, have, what would tomorrow's situation have been like if we had done this sooner? I'd like to think it'd be really different. But for the next tomorrow, and for the other kids going through our system right now, it will be. We're doing this work, but we really need your help. What can you do to respond to child trafficking here in Albany and wherever you're watching from? Support the systems these kids come into contact with. Mentor a child. Volunteer at a runaway homeless youth shelter. Donate to programs that serve kids and teens. And foster a child. These are the kids who need our services. They're already in these systems, and we can help them now. Learn more about child trafficking and call your legislator and tell them that you support funding for these services for trafficked youth. We're doing this work, but we can't do it alone. We need your help to build a strong, coordinated, responsive system so that all the boys and girls in New York, including Tamara, have a support system and we can end trafficking. Thank you.